Hello and welcome to another episode of Mr. Viola's Physics Classroom. Today our topic is acceleration. So we should start with what exactly is acceleration? What does it mean to accelerate? So acceleration is the word we use to describe a change in velocity. So quite often people think acceleration is only speeding up. It's a common misnomer about acceleration. It's actually speeding up, slowing down, or a change in direction over time. So velocity, we did in the last video, is basically how fast you're going in a certain direction. So if I change that velocity, then I'm accelerating. Even if I'm headed in the same direction, if I slow down or speed up in that direction, then I'm accelerating. Or if I change my direction, by definition that changes my velocity, which means I had to have accelerated. Like velocity is a vector, acceleration is also a vector, so it has a direction with it as well. So I can accelerate in a certain direction. If I'm speeding up, I'm accelerating in the direction of my velocity. If I'm slowing down, I'm speeding, I am accelerating in the opposite direction of my velocity. So I'm accelerating backwards. For instance, if I had a ball, and I threw that ball up into the air, And I threw that ball up into the air. It's going to go up and come back down. And throughout the whole travel, what I've got is acceleration. So despite the fact that the velocity here is up, the acceleration is always downward because it's slowing down on the way up, stops at the top, and then the velocity changes. Now it's in the same direction as the acceleration, which means that it's going to speed up as it goes back down. So it's a pretty simple example of acceleration and velocity potentially being in the same direction and opposite directions. You see this in the car often when you're driving. The, butt, the pedal on the floor they call the accelerator because when you push it, your car accelerates. It goes faster. It changes your velocity. The way that we're most often going to represent acceleration is through a series of graphs. And those graphs we looked at in class the other day, they're called kinematic stacks. And so it's usually a grouping of three types of graphs. Uh, generally we start with a position versus time graph. And so based on what my position versus time graph is, I can look at what the velocity and the acceleration would be for, uh, for that particular graph, for that motion I'm displaying. So if I have a fairly simple uh, position versus time graph such as this, so that you might recognize this from the buggy lab, uh, the walking lab, basically any of the labs we've done so far, gave you a line like this. As a little review, we know the slope of this line is its velocity. So if I solve for the slope of this, I solve for the velocity of whatever's moving. And this is a pretty consistent velocity. You're going to have one slope for the whole line. It's not changing. It's constant. If I wanted to graph that velocity as a function of time, I could then move to this graph. So taking this data and what I found here, what would this graph look like? And so that's the second part of our kinematic stack. Now what should I ask myself, is the, is the slope constant, and is it positive or negative, or zero? In this case, it's a positive constant slope. So on the velocity graph, I have a positive constant velocity. So every second, my velocity stays the same. This, every second I traveled further, but my velocity wasn't changing because the slope was the same. As I do this, I can look at this and say my slope here is clearly zero, but it also represents my acceleration. So how do I show that on an acceleration graph? Well, an acceleration graph in this case is going to look like this. I'll set it up as an acceleration in meters per second squared versus time. And in this scenario, 
because my slope is both constant and zero, I have a constant acceleration, but that constant acceleration is zero. There is no acceleration in this, which if we trace it back makes sense because the velocity is not changing. And even all the way back here, the slope is constant the whole way through. So the question becomes, what do I do with this acceleration? Or what, do I, what does a graph look like if there is acceleration? And that graph would look something like this. This curve represents acceleration. How do I know that? Because when I ask my questions, is it constant? And is it positive or negative? The answer is that it's not constant, and I can see that it's a positive slope the whole time. When I'm looking at this, what I should see is that each one of these, if I took tangent lines of each spot, each one of them is a different slope. In this case, it's getting progressively larger. What that tells me is that my velocity graph starts out slow and gets progressively larger as time goes by. My velocity is changing. It's a positive, not constant slope, or not constant line, not a constant velocity, and it's in the positive direction. So again, if I want to go to my uh, acceleration graph, I look at the slope. Here is still the acceleration. Unlike last time, the slope is not zero. It's constant and it's positive. So my slope, or my uh, acceleration, is a constant positive value. So something that's in the positive, and it's a constant number the whole time. The other option I could have would be if I had something along the lines of this. The first thing I have to do is figure out is it constant, positive, negative, or zero? So we just see that it's not constant, and for the most part it's positive, and so we get to the very end where it becomes zero. This is really the third question you want to ask yourself is, does my slope, if it's not constant, ever, to ever become zero? And we see that at the end, this one does become zero. Wherever your slope is zero on the graph before, it will cross the zero after the, uh, the origin on the next graph. So I started quickly, and I went down to zero. And so when I was doing this, my velocity, I started out going quickly. If I draw my tangent lines in, the slope is changing and it's getting less and less the whole time. So now, this represents a slowing down. We talked earlier, if I'm slowing down, my acceleration is opposite my velocity. And so in this case, my slope is negative and constant, but my acceleration is negative and constant. These graphs are gonna be very helpful for you as we move forward through this unit. If you can look at a graph or you can look at data and figure out what it's trying to tell you and how the acceleration is going to compare to the velocity, you'll be in really good shape. So to recap, we have a new equation, acceleration, this change in velocity over time. We have three new graphs that when they're put together are called the kinematic stack. And coming up soon, we're going to have something called the kinematic equations. This will be the rest of our unit will be based on these three ideas. So the kinematic equations will add three more equations to what we already have. Uh, in addition to acceleration equals uh, change in velocity over time and velocity is change in position over time. The last thing that was important that we talked about the other day is something you can do with, an with a velocity versus time graph. Now that we've moved on to talking about acceleration, this will be basically the graph of choice for us going forward. So if I have a velocity time graph and I collect my data and it comes out to something like this, that's wonderful. We've already talked about how the slope is the acceleration. What we haven't talked about yet though is that if I look at the area underneath the curve here, if I take the area 
We all know the area for a triangle. Here's the shape this makes. One half the base times the height. The base is in time and the height in, in a, is a velocity measurement. So what the area comes out to be is the displacement of whatever's moving. So it works the other way, where the slope gets us to the next graph, the area gets us to the graph that came before it, and how much ground do we cover. And this could be any shape. We could have a very similar graph of velocity and time, where it makes a flat line, and I find the area the same way. I look right here, I find the area, but in this case, the area is length times width. Either way, whatever the line is, if you find the area underneath it, you found the displacement of the graph, or the displacement of the example that we're looking at. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll do kinematic equations next time. Have a great day.